We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome to The Freak Show. I am your host, Bumpy McSquiggums, and today we're hopping in. We're beginning our Let's Play of Immortal Realms Vampire Wars by Palindrome Interactive and Calypso Media, released on August 28th, 2020. There was a bit of email snafu back and forth a little bit here and there, but eventually I got my hands on the full released version of the game, the code and everything else. And here we are. We are about to begin our adventure. I am going to hop in and do the tutorial. I know some people will be like, no. Some people will be like, yay. So it's a mixed bag, guys and gals. But that'll hopefully teach us everything that we need to know, and then we'll be able to continue on from there. We'll go through the campaign and all the other stuff. So it'll be hopefully a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I did do a first look video or some early access coverage of the game, and it looked like a lot of fun. I had some cool battles, uh, one that I should not have been able to win, and I pulled it out and won anyway. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's hop in and begin the tutorial. Warmont, welcome to the Immortal Realms tutorial. This tutorial will teach you all you need to know to start playing and exploring in the world of Nemaya. Follow the tutorial hints in the top left corner of the screen to learn how to play. Have fun and good luck, Commander. Alright, I am ready. Welcome to Immortal Realms. Welcome to the Immortal Realms tutorial. This tutorial will teach you everything you need to know on how to play this game and explore the world of Namar. While the tutorial ends at the top left of the screen to learn how to play, have fun, and good luck. Got it. All over it. Camera movement. Wazd, Kui, and Mouse Wheel. Alright, next oop. Uh, toggle screenshot, really? Uh, interact with, yeah, sorry, interact, to interact with the world, you can left click on the banners or left click directly on a province or army. Okay. There's a banner. Uh, select your keep, Dracul keep, and then select a nearby village. Did it. I am all over this junk. Oh, oh, we can, okay. I see, I see, we can toggle the screenshot. Blood is the main resource in Immortal Realms. What would it be in a vampire simulator 2020, you know, and all that? It is used for recruiting units, upgrading buildings, and playing cards. The main way to get more blood is to claim villages and cities. If you run out of blood, your armies will start to lose health. For more information, you can hover on the blood pool or open the economic and resource overview by pressing its button in the top left. Hover over it. Okay. And our income is five. Our upkeep is zero. So we're getting a net gain of five. All right. Your next goal should be to claim the nearby village. Left click on your army to select it. Then right click on the village province to move the army. Moving your army will drain one of its action points. Your army can move through multiple provinces with one move command if your army has enough action points. Move the army to the village and claim the village. Uh, I right click, right? Yeah, there we go. Move on in. And right, then we got to claim the village. Is that this one? Yeah, claim. It uses one AP to claim the province. All right, done. Your army is now out of action points. To gain more action points, you will need to end your turn. Pressing the end turn button will end your turn, and the other factions will get their turn. All right, it's spring of 1400. Let's change that up a little. Okay, that was that was pretty quick. All right, we'll do the next one here. Uh, at the start of your new turn, your armies will regain their action points, and you will gain blood from any villages or cities under your control. Okay. What's next? Cards. If the tutorial window is ever in the way, you can minimize it with the button in the top right of the corner. Okay. One of the main ways of interacting with the game world is through action cards. New cards will be drawn every four turns, but can also be purchased from the library building and through other clan unique actions. The Dracul, for instance, will gain cards after being successful in combat. Accept cards, play the, sac play the sacrifice card, play the forced migration card on the village. All right. Cast on Dracul Keep to recruit units for 25% less cost. Force Migration and Sacrifice. All right. I've accepted the cards. They said to play the Sacrifice card. Done. And then the Forced Migration onto a village. I think I just got to drag it on over there. There it is. 
It's now time to start recruiting some more units for your army. Select your army with a left click and right click on the Dracul Key Province to move the army. Uh, once there, use the recruit army action to trigger a recruitment draw phase. Use the recruit army action to recruit a unit. Uh, recruit down here. That's what we have. This is it. Recruit, cast, and... Oh, no, no, no. That's... Okay, armies with action points. Is this the recruit one? Uh, Alright, let's see what it says here. Yes, that's recruit. Okay. Where'd all the stuff go that was down there? I, I guess... Oh, I, I clicked off. I got you. I got you. Alright. Uh, army units have different classes. This decides their base stats. Tanks have high health and armor, but they don't hit hard. Assassins deal high damage, but have low health and armor. Warriors are a neat balance of the two. Some units have keywords that give them extra effects like ranged attacks. Remember the tutorial UI is in the way you can minimize it. Use the recruit army action to recruit a unit. All right, let's see what we got available to us. It looks like the Dracul Half-Bloods, the Dracul Riders, and the Cruel Warriors are all uh, outside of our range. They require, I don't know what, tier two, I guess, for the Half-Bloods, three for the Riders, and three for the Warriors. And we're not able to hire the tier two stuff. So we have thin blood spearmen and thin blood archers. So these are like amongst the weakest. We have a tank and we have an archer. Okay, good to know. There's an assassin, a warrior, and another warrior for the half bloods. All right, so clearly the archers are a ranged unit. This unit's basic attack has a range of five tiles, and you can perform the aimed shot ability. I think I'm going to go that route. Uh, okay, next up. Another way to trigger a recruitment draw phase is to play an action card. These can be played on any recruitment building, and it does not require that army that your army is present. Use the recruit Dracul card to recruit a new unit. Cast to recruit a unit at 25% less cost. Okay, well, I mean, we already did the archers. Let's go with the spearmen. Just in case. Gotta keep that front line strong too, you know. I like to sit back and use range. Do you guys know that? That's kind of my jam when it comes to tactical turn-based strategy. Uh, protect the archers and shoot stuff from afar and try to stay safe. But, I mean, you gotta have that front line. Time to further expand your kingdom and uh, diversify your army. End your turn to regain your army's action points and move to the nearby cave. Claim the cave and use the new army card to trigger a recruitment draw phase. A recruit a bat unit. Okay. End the turn, replenish AP, claim the cave, recruit a bat. All over it. End the turn. Alright. Get our army. Move here. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to claim the cave. Dracul cave. And then we're going to use the recruit thing. Do we recruit on the... Okay, we do. So, again, we can only use tier 1 units at this point. So we get a bat swarm. It's an assassin. There's also the dire bats and the vampire bats. Which are a bit stronger in each. So from 55 to 75. 5 to 15. 100 health to 125. 8. I don't know what that is still eight and seven and seven so that's movement and i don't know i'm not sure what the little fist thing is maybe uh endurance or something uh i have no idea all right well we're recruiting the bat unit and next Towards the unknown, one-third of uh, our little st stuff here. Okay, it's time to head toward the nearby blacksmith hiding in the fog of war. Before you can claim the blacksmith, you need to claim the empty province. To claim a province, it needs a neighbor. It, sorry, it needs to neighbor a province you already control, or be a keep. Keeps can always be claimed. And your turn to regain your AP, claim the nearby province, and the turn to start a new year. So end turn. Move our boy. Claim this over here. Claim it. And then we have to end our turn again. It starts the new year. 
Every four turns, you'll get to choose a ruling. Oh. Here you can give your clan powerful boosts depending on what you want to focus on on the next coming turns. Want to focus on conquering? Choose a ruling that will reduce the cost of new units and give blood rewards after combat. All right. Uh, and turn to regain AP. And turn to start the new gear. Choose our feed the hunger. Gain 10 blood after combat. All units cost 50% more to recruit. Our hunger brings for blood brings us to the doorstep of our enemies. Well, that sounds terrible, actually. Sure, we get 10 blood after combat, but everything costs 50% more to recruit. Shouldn't that be less? Theory comes first. Smiths can wait. Library costs less. Uh, okay, have tra uh, libraries cost blacksmithing cards cost more. Building upgrades cost less, and all units cost 25% more to recruit. This seems extra bad. Well, whatever. We're going with it. Uh, every four turns, a new year will start. On the first turn of a new year, yearly card draw phase will trigger. Here you will get to choose three out of five cards to add to your hand. Force migration. Gain 200% experience. Sorry, 200 experience for your bloodline. Play a blacksmith or library to craft an extra item and gain an extra card for 25% less cost. Drain 20 mana on enemy lord, gain one blood, discard all cards in your hand, replace them with new random cards. Well, I like the forced migration, I like this. I think I'm going to go with the change of plans. Alright, next up. Claiming new provinces and defeating enemies with any lord in your army will reward you with clan experience. Gather enough and your clan will level up and allow you a legacy point. Claim a blacksmith, open legacies, choose a legacy. Alright boys, let's get on over here and get this thing done. I have claimed you. By claiming the blacksmith you have gained enough clan experience to level up. Whenever your clan levels up you'll gain one legacy point. You spend a legacy tree, open the legacy tree to spend your legacy point. Unspent legacy points, it's there. Is there... Okay, and then this is the other way, clan level, okay. Cool, we're gonna get rid of that for right now. So, I mean, we don't have a lot of options. It's gonna have to be Iron Fist, but. Uh, okay, we got one point allocation. I mean, that, that's that's literally all we can do. No more points available. So what does Iron Fist do? Increases the Lord's attack by 10 and the Lord's armor by five. That's not bad. Okay, I say next. It is time to attack your first enemy. Remember to end your turn and gain new action points. And then use the left click to select your army. Right click to the province of the enemy. And just standing in and just stop the things. All right, cool. So we're going to close this. Use your army to attack and win the battle. All right. So we must end our turn. This is where our fiendish foe is about to fall victim to our something. I, I got nothing. All right. Let's get on over here. Um, so we got ourselves a spearman, an archer, another spearman. Can we can we change the order of these guys? And the bat swarm versus two peasants. That sounds like we gonna win this. And they don't have a leader, and we do. So this should go our way. All right, entering combat. Warmont fields one. While the forests and mountains of Warmont belong to feral beasts, the fields belong to the mortal inhabitants. Here they can farm the land and live a mostly peaceful existence, protected by their vampire overlords. But living in Warmont is not free. In return for their protection, the vampires of the land demand a blood tax, and those who refuse to pay are never seen again. <laughs> It's Boron Dracul. Battle Scars. Okay. Uh, welcome to your first battle in Immortal Realms. The goal of this battle is to destroy all the enemy units without losing all of your own. Cool. At the start of the battle, you'll be shown your lords and the enemy lords' aspirations. These are bonuses you can unlock by completing the level up requirements. Heal units using Blood Drinker, Lifesteal, or Death Tap to rank up. Okay. The aspiration of yours and the enemy lords is randomized at the start of the battle. If the army does not contain a lord, it will not have an aspiration. During the placement phase, you can choose the starting positions of your troops. Use left click to select a unit and place it with right click. Make sure to keep your tanks in front, your archers in the back, flankers on the sides. 
or experiment with uh, placement strategies that work best for you. In the top right, you can toggle the grid on or off and change the color of the movement lines. To end the placement phase, use the battle button at the bottom right. The order in which the units move is decided by each unit's initiative score. This order is highlighted in the initiative queue. All right. If you don't want to move your unit now, you can use the wait button in the lower right corner of the screen to move the unit later in the initiative queue. When it is your turn to move, a unit simply to move a unit, simply right-click where you want the unit to move. The move distance is determined by the unit's stats. Any enemy unit within range can be attacked. When you're when attacking your unit will deal its attack as damage to the enemy unit while it will deal a portion of its attack in retaliation. Alright. Having another friendly unit next to or across from the enemy when attacking the enemy will result in a flanking bonus, which will deal extra damage. Half flank will deal 10%, while full flank is 25% more. Alright. Different units have different attack types, for instance, ranged attacks. These can only be done before moving, but the attacker is always safe from retaliatory strikes. Units with magic attacks will ignore the defender's armor. Good to know. Keywords and abilities. All units have keywords that give the, your units different unique functions, like lifesteal and regeneration. Some keywords will give your units abilities that can be used in combat. Any available abilities can be found in the bottom right of the screen, just above the end turn button once the battle has started. Shrines can be found on all battle maps. These magical altars will give a buff to any unit that is standing in these tiles that it affects. To see what effect a shrine will give units close to it, simply hover over the shrine. Your lord has access to a number of spell cards that can be used to turn the battle in your favor. A spell card can be played whenever it is your turn. Playing a spell card cost mana, however. You have a limited amount of mana except for a few keywords. It cannot be replenished in battle. So... Plan the plane of your spell cards carefully. You can now close the tutorial. If you would like to read it again, press the question mark button in the top right. Close. All right, it is time to get into the battle. Can we, uh, can we adjust the angle? It doesn't look like it. All right. So we have our lord, we have our assassin, we have our boys. All right, let's get our boys up there. I think I'm going to throw the assassins to the winds. What is this? Grants repost, which makes retaliation attacks deal full damage. Huh, neat. Alright, I think we're good. Let's battle. It is our Lord's turn. Let's step forward here. The peasants with their pitchforks are coming forth to carry us home. Grants ignore pain, which lets a unit ignore the attack penalty normally applied when a while well, the unit is hurt. Yeah. We'll chill right here. Void Center grants the teleport ability. Watch the units appear and Okay, that's kind of neat. Uh, who is it? Archers. How far out can the archers attack? Uh, the red, the red squares, I think, is is accurate. All right, we're just gonna move the crew up a bit. See if they want to mess with me. Yeah, attack the, the Lord. Attack him. He's going to eat your souls. Possibly. I'm going for the half flank here. Go ahead, retaliatorize. I'm going to do nothing. Alright, we're going to be able to go ahead and launch an attack here. Do some damage. A little bit of thin blood action going on. Uh, we can wait, right? Let's wait. We okay. serve the Dracul. We serve the Dracul. Oh. A little bit of stab at a stab action. We serve the Dracul. I'm gonna Draculify once more. They always get a retaliatory strike. They do. Okay. I serve the bloodline. All right. So, if we attack. Deal damage, wait, deal damage to your, to a unit and heal, okay. That's one. Deal damage to your lord and all adjacent, no, I don't want to, oh, do that. 
There we go. That felt pretty good. All right, let's get rid of this guy. First combat was an easy combat. We, there's no way we we're going to be able to heal that up, unfortunately. It was just not in the cards for us. But we'll take that sweet, sweet victory. All right, welcome to the... We already know this. That's good. Onward! It is time... Okay, we did that. Next up. Congratulations! You have defeated the enemy army. As a reward for winning the battle, you received these two items. Units in your army also increase in veterancy, which increases their combat stats. You can see your unit's veterancy in the army info UI. Accept the spoils of war, equip the helmet, and the ring. Alright, so we hit continue. I don't really see a veterancy thing going on, but that's cool. All right, so we got the Fallen Knight Helmet and the Iron Serpent Ring. Ten armor and one initiative. All right, items can be equipped on your lords and will give them a boost either in battle or in kingdom mode. Uh, whatever, or sorry, what items your lord has equipped can be found in the item tab of the army UI. Simply play the item card on your lord and then, or select your lord and drag the item cards onto the lord UI in the bottom left. One, only one item can be equipped per slot. When trying to equip a new item in an occupied slot, you will be prompted if you want to equip the new item. The old equipment will be destroyed in the exchange. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, so we could do it that way, or we can do... What was the other way? Um... Found in the item tab of the army UI. So if we go here and we go to the item tab. Is that not a thing that we... Oh, oh, is this the item tab? Why is the item t Why is this one hot? You know what, it's fine. Did it actually go on him? I guess it did. But they didn't show up. I'm, I'm very confused. See, it shows that they're here. But it didn't show when I did... I'm I, What? Oh, now they're there. Oh, that's so weird. Alright, that's fine. Very strange. During the battle, your lord leveled up. Leveling up will increase your lord's combat power, as well as letting you choose one of the lord's locked special cards to unlock. When all spell cards are unlocked, you will instead choose which of the spell cards you want to upgrade. Choose your lord's new spell card. Okay, so now we can go to this. Yes, maybe. Now we can go to this. Okay. So we already had... Drain life and bloodstorm. Now there's life steal, bloodlust, and blood barrier. I think I'm gonna go with life steal. Let me continue. Okay, there we go. As you expand your kingdom, you'll need to recruit more lords to lead more armies. Suitable humans to turn into vampire lords can be found in manors. Claim the manor and use the turn human army. Action to browse the available humans. Remember to end your turn and regain your army's action points. Okay. So I have to claim this. Okay. And then we're going to end the turn. And then is it here? Turn. Search the nearby manor for worthy candidates to turn to your side. Now you'll choose which of the three available lords you want. Each of these have their own background, which determines what cards and traits are available to them. As these grow in strength, they will unlock new traits and cards. Claim the manor, turn the human, summon the new lord. Alright, so it looks like we have Erasmus Car Carmichael. No, uh, Erasmus Carmichael. Um, we have a... Uh, Cyrano Bancroft. And we have Kiern Stratton. Elementalist gained five mana. 
Assassin. Uh, gain the flanker keyword. Flanker deals 30% flanking damage. And then the magical savant. Gain 5 mana. I think we gotta go with Carmichael. Erasmus Carmichael. Carmichael, yes. Alright, and these are the different cards that are available. Shadow Swarm. Move your lord to the target tile. Teleportation. You've got the basic same stuff that we have with our other ones. The Bloodlust, Lifesteal. There's a few different ones. Vengeance, target below, Blood Drinker for 66. Okay. And uh, Combat Blizzard. I feel honestly like this is probably the better one to get. Just because... Oh, there's, there's more information here. Just because there's more cards available here. There's a simple trick, a spell or a hex for every situation. Game 5 mana, the magic attack keyword, locks at level 3, attack... Attack, steal magic damage, and ignores armor value. Gain 10 mana, unlocked at 5. Gain the magic protection keyword at 7. Reduces damage taken from magical sources by 50%. Gain 15% mana, unlocks at 10. You can use spells from three random aspects. You know what, we're just going to go with this. Uh, let's see, what do we get? Uh, flanker, gain 4 initiative, 40 attack. Yeah, no, this is the one. How do I, how do I choose this one? It's so like which human you want to turn, the new vampire will be added to your hand. Oh, at the end of the, the eight turns. Okay, I gotcha, gotcha. After a human has been turned, it is added to your hand as a lord card. These cards can be played on any keep you control to summon it into the game world. Now we have to summon the... Okay, okay, I gotcha. I gotcha, I understand. There we go. We've done it. All right, a new way to improve your kingdom is to upgrade the buildings you control. This can be done either with construction cards or army actions. For now, use your lord's construction army action to, pur to purchase an upgrade for your keep. Use an army action to upgrade your keep. Um, Tome of Knowledge. What, what, is, what does that mean? Sorry. Use army action to upgrade your keep. Oh, 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 I gotcha, I gotcha. Construction, okay, 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 okay. Uh, upgrades cost blood and will be completed instantly. Some upgrades, like elite troops and champion upgrades, need to be unlocked on the clan legacy tree before becoming available. Use an army action to upgrade your keep. Still there. So it looks like we can't do those two. Order signed in blood gives one action point to an army. Starting their turn at this keep. Continue. While this upgrade... With this upgrade, your armies will start with extra action points at the start of the turn. Different buildings have these various passive effects. Sorry about that, folks. By selecting and looking at the province info, you can find out what other effects some buildings have. Use an army action to upgrade your key. We've done that. All right. In order to win the campaign mission or a sandbox scenario, you need to complete the win conditions. Click on the win condition to see what you need to do to complete the tutorial. Finish the win condition and this tutorial. Win condition. Complete the tutorial, 15-15, defeat the final army, and then hold provinces 6 out of, we need to hold 13. Okay. Remember, you can use the drop-down menu to return to any tutorial slide if you need to be reminded of anything. When you have completed all conditions, press the win condition card to complete. Good luck. Finish the win conditions and the tutorial. Okay, well, it looks like we have a fair bit still to go. We got through all 15 of the tutorial quests. Now we must defeat the final army, and we need to get, well, uh, like seven more provinces before we are officially done. So, that is going to be a tale for the very next episode. We'll finish it up, and hopefully it goes pretty quickly, and we'll be able to hop in and start the campaign in earnest. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the tutorial helped a lot and explained a lot of things that I was unaware of that I did not know. So I'm pretty happy about that, and, well, like I said, we'll see how things go as we go along. All right, folks, if you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, the publisher, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video and various links and things of that nature, just like it always is. If you happen to enjoy the video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel. There's tons of stuff out there, over 8,000 videos, I think, at this point that you can go check out, watch, enjoy, and love. And, of course, 
A big shout out and a thank you to Clipso Media for sending a code of this my way and allowing me to be part of the beta to check it out and do a little bit of early access coverage of it. All right, folks, till the very next episode, I have been your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show. And always remember, we play, we fight, we conquer.